All right, uh, let me make sure that's good. All right, hi everyone. Thanks for coming out uh, today to this lecture on building widgets in iOS. Uh, my name is Reed Plunkett. Um, a little bit about me. I was the former iOS lead on AppDev for two semesters. As well, I was also previously on the team for six. Um, I also worked on some of our popular apps such as Eatery, Course Grab, Pear, and Scooped. So here is the agenda for today's lecture. Uh, we'll be jumping into a brief introduction and overview of what widgets are. And then we'll be going into building widgets. And then we'll be jumping into configuring widgets. If you haven't already, um, you can feel free to use these next few minutes to download the starter code um, while I kind of give you an overview of widgets. So by show of hands, how many of you have used widgets or know what widgets are? OK, a good amount. So essentially, um, widgets are basically glanceable bite-sized pieces of information you can view from apps directly from your home screen, your today view, or even your lock screen. What's cool is that these widgets also extend beyond just iPhone. On the iPad, we can also have widgets on our lock screen. So here I have some widgets. One of them shows the battery percentage. One of them shows my medicine. We can also have widgets on our Mac desktop. So here I have a weather widget, a clock widget, a widget for stocks. We can even have widgets in the new standby mode for iOS. And finally, we can also have widgets on our watch. And these are usually referred to as complications. Also, if you're really fancy and have one of the new phones, you may recognize these uh, pop-downs that come down from the dynamic island. These are called live, live activities, and they are also built using widgets. So widgets are pretty cool. Um, they allow your app to expand to most, like, a lot of places. Um, and so we're going to learn how to build these. Cool. So let's jump into building these widgets. So here's the widget we're going to build today. Essentially, we're, we're going to create a weather app that has a widget that shows six different weather conditions. Um, starting from the top left, we have uh, sunny, cloudy, overcast, snowy, rainy, and lightning. And what's really neat is that this widget will be able to be viewable in uh, its small size, its a medium size, and a large size. And also, we're going to be able to configure this widget. So we'll be, we'll be able to put a location in and have the weather update based on that location. What's also neat is that this widget will extend to the lock screen. So here I have those two widgets in their lock screen format. And this widget will also work in standby mode. Cool. So there are a few tools we need to use to build these widgets, the first of which is Swift, which I'm sure you're all familiar with at this point in the course. And we'll also need to use Xcode. And there are two new tools I'm going to introduce to you today that we'll also use, the first of which is called Swift UI, and the second of which is called a Widget Kit. So I'll jump into Swift UI just a little bit, but I believe you're going to have a lecture in a few days, next week maybe, on Swift UI more in depth. So treat this as just you know, kind of an introduction. Um, but essentially, Swift UI is an Apple framework that allows you to build the uh, app UI declaratively. Don't worry so much about what that word means right now. You'll learn all about that. But you can think of it right now as UIKit's successor. Um, and so since widgets are a, kind of a new feature, they've been introduced in iOS uh, 14, um, Apple only gave you the option to build them using this uh, more advanced, newer framework. Um, and so it is required to use Swift UI to build widgets. Um, and the star of the show today is WidgetKit. This is essentially the Apple framework that's going to allow us to build these widgets, complications, and live activities. And essentially what this, what this framework does is it allows our app to extend to outside contacts, being the home screen, lock screen, Mac desktop, um, everything I basically showed you previously. And those are the four, uh, the four tools we'll essentially be using to build these widgets. Um, if there are any questions along the way, feel free to stop me. Are there any questions at this point? Cool. So we can have two uh, kind of widget variations. We can either have a static widget, or we can have a configurable widget. And so a static widget is one that only shows you information. Um, and a configurable widget is one where you can actually input data. So um, I'm going to show you first how to create a static widget. Um, using just kind of dummy weather data. 
And then if we have time in the end, we'll kind of make it configurable where I can put in a location and actually view the weather. Cool. So first, before we go forward, let's talk about this idea of a budget. So rendering a widget is actually very costly. Um, if you render a widget a lot, it uses a lot of system resources and can drain your battery. So in consequence, each widget is assigned a budget on how much it's allowed to be rendered. And so this budget uh, is kind of de determined by a few factors, one of which is how often it's visible um, and how often you're kind of interacting with it. Obviously, if you're using a widget more, it should be uh, refreshed more often. It's also de dependent on the widget's last reload time. So if it's been a while since a widget's been reloaded, then the system will kind of give it a bigger budget um, to be reloaded faster. And it's also dependent on whether the widget's app is currently active. So if I'm using the weather app, then I probably want my weather widgets to reload based on any changes I'm making in the app. So a typical allocation is typically around 40 to 70 refreshes in a 24 hour period, um, which is roughly every 15 to 30 minutes your widgets will reload. Cool. Next, let's talk about this idea of a timeline. So we have to define what's called a timeline for our widget. And essentially, this allows us to update our widget at predictable points in the future. So what WidgetKit will do is we'll feed this timeline to WidgetKit, and it will automatically refresh our widget at these points. And you can think of each point on the timeline as an entry, and each entry has a date. So for example, if I want to create a widget and have it refresh every hour for five hours, I would have five entries each separated by one hour. Here's kind of a diagram of what a timeline looks like. Let's go into this. I know it's kind of a lot to look at, but first we start off with WidgetKit asking us for a timeline. It says, I want to refresh this widget. I need a timeline on how often this widget should be rendering. It's our job as the implementer to provide this timeline to WidgetKit. And what that might look like, here's an example of one timeline that has four entries each an hour apart. You can also see we have an at end refresh policy, which basically tells WidgetKit that once the last entry is rendered, I want you to ask me again for a new timeline. Essentially, I want you to refresh the timeline. And here are those four entries that get rendered every single hour. And at the end, WidgetKit's going to reload that timeline and ask us to provide a new timeline. And the second timeline, we're, we're going to only provide one entry, and we're going to say, don't refresh after you render this entry. And your widget will render it, and that will conclude this timeline, or these two timelines. <coughs> Are there any questions with the timeline or budgeting or anything like that? OK, cool. So there are five kind of steps or components we're going to implement today to build this widget. The first is creating each one of those timeline entries for our weather widget. The second is creating the timeline that we're going to provide to WidgetKit through the timeline provider. The third is creating the widget itself. Then we're going to create the widget's view, the actual UI of the widget. And then we're going to create the widget bundle. So I'm going to go into each of these. Let's start with the timeline entry. So as I mentioned before, the timeline entry specifies the date to display the widget. And it also specifies the widget's content. And this is going to be fetched from the timeline provider. So let's move over to Xcode now. And I'll kind of give you an overview of the project here. So feel free to follow along. And if you have any questions, let me know. But over here, we have a new Xcode project. Um, this is our weather app. And the first thing I want to point your attention to is over here, um, we have three different folders. One's called weather, one's called weather widget, and one's called frameworks. So the weather folder, you can kind of just ignore for right now. Essentially, this contains our app, our actual weather app. The more important folder is going to be our weather widget folder, which contains all the code that's relevant for the widget. Um, so here we have a, a file called weather.swift. And um, I provided you some code just to save time, but I believe you all should be familiar with models at this point in networking. Um, this is essentially a model we create for weather to describe um, a weather object. Um, and so 
Within this model, we have conditions that are represented as a string. We have symbol, which is the symbol of this, this weather. We have the color, and we have the temp. And so below that, I made five or six constants for sunny, cloudy, overcast, rainy, and lightning. Um, passing in the conditions, I passed in sunny. Symbol, I'm passing in a string. Um, just because uh, as an aside here, um, there's a really cool program that Apple makes called SF Symbols, <coughs> where you can grab system level symbols using a string. So over here, if I copy sunmax.fill and paste it, it looks like I'm gonna be using this symbol as the UI component. Um, and then we also are gonna assign a color. And you'll notice that we have our own assets catalog inside of the weather widget folder. And in here, we have six different colors that correspond to what's gonna be the background color of our widget. And so that is what we're referencing inside of this color here. And then we just give it some arbitrary temperature. Great. Next, let's go ahead and, um, or actually one more thing I wanna point out real quick is we also have a frameworks folder here which contain the frameworks I mentioned before, being WidgetKit and SwiftUI. Cool. So let's go ahead and write our first file here, which is going to be the widget entry. So I'll start by importing WidgetKit. And this is the framework we're going to be using today to implement this, uh, this widget. And then I'll create a new structure, um, a new structure. Um, that will represent my uh, widget entry. And so this will conform to what's called a timeline entry protocol. And so after I do this, I'm going to get yelled at here by saying I didn't implement some protocol method. It looks like I'm missing date. So if you don't add a date to the entry, you're going to get yelled at by Xcode. Um, so we should do that. And then I'm also going to add the content. So remember that an entry requires a date for the widget and also the content you want to display in the widget. So my content in this case will be just the weather. And that's going to allow me to grab all those components we defined in, uh, in this file here from that entry. Cool. So that's, that's all we have to write for the entry. Pretty, pretty simple, um, pretty lightweight. Moving on, next we're going to implement the timeline provider. And the timeline provider essentially tells WidgetKit when to update the widget. So we're going to provide, the, uh, sorry, the provider provides three types of entries to WidgetKit. The first of which is a placeholder entry, the second of which is a snapshot entry, and the third is a timeline, which is an array of entries. And so <clears throat> if you use widgets before, and you've noticed that when you restart your phone or when you download a new app, you may uh, come across this where the widget seems to be loading. This is actually what's called a placeholder. So it shows not necessarily the UI components, but it shows where those components would be um, as the widget is loading. The second entry is the snapshot. And this is basically a lightweight entry. Um, when you open up a, the widget gallery to select a new widget, you don't want to be necessarily making, you know, like an expensive networking call or something. You just want to show the user quickly what the widget could look like, even if it's some arbitrary data. So that's what the snapshot is. And then the timeline entry itself is the actual like widget the user will see on their home screen. It fetches data, it can perform expensive tasks. Um, it's a thing that's going to get updated every single hour, two hours, however you want to define your timeline. So we're going to go ahead and implement the timeline provider here. So I'll move over to weather widget provider. And here I'm going to import again a widget kit. And I'm going to create a new structure. I'm going to call this provider. And this is going to conform to the timeline provider protocol. So you'll notice I get yelled at again here. It looks like it's missing some information. So essentially, the timeline provider protocol has a type called entry. And we have to map this to the weather entry we created ourselves. So to map those two types, we use type alias. And we can 
type in weather entry. Oops. Uh, I'm gonna, I noticed the wrong thing. I'm gonna re rename this to weather. I called it widget entry. Okay, there we go. Um, cool. So it looks like we're still not done yet. We're still getting yelled at by Xcode. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click fix here to see what's wrong. And cool, looks like we didn't implement these three protocol methods. So you'll see we have a method for placeholder. We have a method for fetching our snapshot entry and we have a method for fetching our timeline. So we have a method for each one of those three types of entries. <clears throat> so let's start by writing the code for fetching our placeholder entry. Looks like we're returning a uh, weather entry type here. So I'm going to click do return. I'm going to create a new weather entry. And then it's asking for two parameters here. We're asking for dates. And I'm going to just do the current date. I can do that by just making a new date object like that. And then because it's a placeholder and nothing's going to show up to the user, um, it doesn't really matter what we put here in terms of the weather content. So I'll just do sunny. Cool. Next, let's write the uh, function for getting the snapshot entry. So again, um, this is not really a, you know, too dependent on uh, you know, fetching data from a networking service. So we can obviously any, uh, we can pass in any arbitrary content we want. So I'll just create an entry for, let's just do weather entry date, and I'll just do cloudy. Um, so that means whenever I go through my widget gallery, I'll always see the cloudy um, widget. Um, and the actual timeline is a little more complicated. So essentially, we're going to create an array of entries, and then we're going to create a timeline. Um, so let's start by creating an array of entries. This will be of type weather entry array. And initially, it's going to be empty. I also want to make this a var because we're going to add elements to it in the future. <clears throat> so for the sake of time, um, if you were building an actual app, you may want to fetch some, you know, some data from some server API. Um, for the sake of time, I'm going to only just make the weather random. So every time you get you, uh, you know, open up a new widget, it's going to select from a random weather. So we can do that by creating a array of possible weathers. And this will also, well, this will be a weather array. And then within that array, I'm going to add each one of those weathers that um, we created in that weather folder or weather file. So these are all six of our weather conditions. Cool. So next. Um, like I said before, the timeline usually starts from the current date. So I'm going to create a variable called current date. And we can, person singing, um, we can create a new date variable here with the current date. And then for the sake of this example, I want to create a timeline of five entries that are each one hour apart. So um, I'll do this using a for loop. So we'll do for our offset in zero dot dot less than five. This is basically, you know, go from zero, one, two, three, four, not including five. Um, I'm going to define a new date for the entry. So we'll call this let entry date. And I think this is new. So if it might be a little, if it's a little confusing, feel free to follow along, but we're gonna use, or feel free to ask questions, but we're gonna use something called calendar dot current, then date by adding. We'll do hour, hour offset, and then current date. So essentially what this line is doing is it's using something called calendar to get the current date I made before, and then add one hour to that date. Um, or two hours, or three hours, or four hours, depending on what hour offset is in the for loop. Does anyone have any questions on how that works? 
That part's not so much more important. That's just more day manipulation in Swift. Yeah. Oh, you're right. So this is actually a good catch. This should actually be passed in through the completion handler. So the reason we don't have to return the entry is because these are asynchronous functions because the expectation here is that you may want to grab some data from some server. And so we have to you know, return it through your completion handler because um, it could be like a networking call inside of these functions. The placeholder will never have a networking call. Um, but although it's not best practice to put asynchronous code inside of the get snapshot because you want that to be kind of snap or fast and snappy, um, you can do it. But in the timeline, it's a pretty fair game to have like a networking call. But just for the sake of time, we're going to just do things like, like synchronously using just random elements. Um, cool. So next, we have you know a date. We have one hour, zero hours, one hour, two hour, three hours in the future. Um, let's create the entry now. So I'll do let entry equals weather entry. And then here it's asking for the date. I'll put an entry date. And then the weather, I will just do possible weathers, referring to the array we have up here, dot random element. And I'm going to force unwrap that. And then it's also yelling at me because date can be optional. I'm also just going to force unwrap date because um, I know that won't cause any issues. OK, cool. And so next, we just simply have to add this entry we created to that entry's array. And so with that, we've just created five entries, each one hour apart, um, and each of which having some random weather to it. The last part here is to create our actual timeline. And we can do that by saying let timeline equals timeline. And then here, I can pass in that entries array we created earlier. It's also going to ask me to pass in some policy. I'm going to do a dot at end policy, basically telling WidgetKit that once the last entry in this timeline renders, I want you to ask me to provide you with a new timeline or refresh the timeline. So I'll do at end. And then the last part is just to pass this timeline into our completion handler. Cool. All right, so that is the timeline provider completed. Um, if you found that challenging, feel free to ask me questions now or after class. Um, this is probably the most complicated code we're going to write today. Um, but it's probably the most, the most important code. All right, cool. So next, let's go ahead and move on to the widget itself. So essentially, the widget defines some sort of identifier for the widget, as well as some configuration. And so the configuration, that's going to take in the timeline provider we just built, and it's going to return a timeline entry from that provider. And so we can then take this timeline entry that we get and pass it into the view for rendering or display. We can also set the widget family, which I'll get into in a bit. So as I mentioned before, we have two types of widgets, static and configurable. Static configuration is the configuration that corresponds to the static widget. And then what's called an app intent configuration corresponds to a configurable widget. Uh, widget. Configurable configuration is kind of silly to say, so that's why I assume they, they said app intents. Um, we'll get into app intents in just a bit. So moving back over to Xcode, let's go into our weather widget file. And here, I'm going to go ahead and import widget kit. As well, I'm going to import Swift UI. And so I'm going to create a new structure here. I'm going to call it weather widget. And this will conform to the widget protocol. I'm then going to create a variable called kind, 
This is going to be a type string, and it's going to contain some sort of identifier we can use to reference this widget throughout our app. So I'll call this weather widget. And then I'm going to define some sort of body for this widget. And you're going to learn more about this, what this code does when you learn SwiftUI. Um, so don't worry so much about the syntax for right now, about what var body some configuration does. Just assume it's taking in some configuration that we're going to provide it. And the configuration we're providing is a static configuration. And it's going to take in the identifier we just created. So I'll pass in kind. And it's going to take in a provider for the timeline, which I believe we called provider. And then it's going to return here some sort of entry that we can use. Great. Um, so real quick, I want, I'm going to navigate to the weather widget view here. So this is mostly written in Swift UI. Actually, it concludes it's written in Swift UI. So that's why I didn't write it here um, in lecture. But feel free to come back to this uh, file after you have next week's lecture, and you kind of explore more what it's doing. But you can kind of think of it as a black box right now where this is just the view of our widget. So I'm going to uncomment this out. Um, if we have time at the end, I can kind of go through this file more. But this basically is just right in the UI for our widget. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. So the weather provider, basically, like, this has its own type called entry. And we're just mapping it to the entry that we created already. Um, and then for the weather widget, um, like, for example, here, this in this structure here, um, when you have, like, a view, uh, like, here we're, we're creating a, a view structure, basically, in SwiftUI. And then this body is what's kind of being returned. Um, and so that's why we have some view, because this body is representing what's being returned. So why is it some? Um, I'm not entirely sure, actually, why it's some, not just view. But this guy will know next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of, you kind of ignore that syntax for now. Um, but the reason I am commenting this now is because um, we're going to pass in the entry into our view here for display. And so we're going to do weather widget view. And you'll notice that it takes in an entry. And so we can use that entry that we get back here and pass that in. Cool. So everything we've done here is pretty much widget kit besides this line right here. This is a little more Swift UI involved. So if there's a little confusion, confusion there, don't worry. Um, you'll learn more about SwiftUI next week. Um, something else we can do to this widget configuration is we can provide a, a few additional details about it, the widget. So I'm going to uh, write here something called configuration display name. And this is basically the string that's going to show when a user tries to pick your widget. So I'll select, I'll type in forecast. And then we can also have a description for this widget. And we can say, view the weather forecast for your location. Cool. So kind of the next part of this is talking about what are called widget families. So a widget family is kind of, you can think of an or a, I guess, a, a way you're which it can appear. Um, we have a few widget families, one of which is system small. We have system medium. And we have system large. And these appear on your home screen like such. We also have accessory families. So we have accessory circular, accessory rectangular, and accessory inline. And these appear on your lock screen or your widget as such. And so we can define kind of where we want our widget to live uh, using um, a dot supported families modifier. And so here, 
I can pass in an array and I can specify exactly where I want my widget to show up and not to show up. So in our case, I want to show up you know, in all of its variants on the home screen. So I'll do dot system small, dot system medium, and dot system large. I also want this widget to appear on the lock screen. And um, I'll do that by making it a rectangular widget on the lock screen. So let's do accessory rectangular. Great. Are there any questions with creating the widget itself or the configuration? Cool. So then the last component here is the view, which I touched on briefly, or the second to last component. And this displays the contents of that widget's timeline entry that we passed in. Um, the entry is fetched from the provider, and it's passed into the view by the configuration. And this is written in Swift UI. And the final component here is the widget bundle. And essentially, this allows us to have multiple widgets inside of our project. Um, yeah. And so navigating back over to Xcode, I can navigate to the weather widget bundle file. And I'm going to go ahead and uncomment this out. But essentially what this code is doing is saying, I want you to select these widgets from this app to display to the user. So here I have the weather widget. I can also add a second widget or a third widget. Basically, I can chain widgets um, in this way. Um, so if you ever want to have multiple widgets for your app, this is how you can tell widget kit, here are all the widgets you can select from or all the user to choose from. Cool. And so I believe now if we go into our weather widget view file, over here you'll notice that I have this kind of preview area, it says preview pause. If you don't see this, you can go ahead and click this icon up here and select canvas and it should show up. But essentially, I should be able to preview my widget from directly within Xcode, assuming we did everything right. And it might take a few seconds here because it is rendering and using some resources, but we'll see. Maybe. Maybe it won't show up. Oh, so we have an issue. Failed to launch. Um, let's try running it. So what we can do, instead of using the preview, we can try running it and see if we get a more informative error message. So up here, this is what's called our target. We can select, instead of running the weather app, we can go ahead and run what's called this weather widget extension. So we don't want to run our app right now. We just want to run the widget itself. So I'll select that, and I'll click Run. And let's see if this runs. Looks like it succeeded. Cool. And so nothing happened. We're still on the home screen. But what we can do now is if we go ahead and um, we customize our home screen, if this will work. Oops. Back here. So I'll go ahead and edit home screen. I'll go to this plus, like, plus button. And here I'll search for weather. We can now see the widget we just created. So I'll go ahead and add this widget. And there it is. Looks like it randomly chose lightning. I'm not entirely sure why the preview is not working, but as long as it works here, we're fine. Um, cool. So with that, we just created our first static widget. How are we doing time? Good. Are there any questions with what we just did in that process? Cool. Next, we're going to create what's called a configurable widget. So we're going to take what we have and build on it to allow the user to enter some sort of data about their location and have the widget adapt or change in response. So 
As a quick reminder, we previously just built a static widget using a static configuration. Now we're going to build a configurable widget using what's called an app intense configuration. So here's the widget we just built. Users will be able to edit the widget and then input some sort of location. And so what's going to drive this customizability is a framework called App Intense. And so this allows us to build configurable widgets by providing the widget with custom information from the user. So let's move over to Xcode here. And let's see here. I'm going to first start by navigating to our weather entry. And so we have to change some, some things here, um, just for the only one thing. But um, essentially, we first have to create a intent for our app that basically tells WidgetKit, I want to change the location. So I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call it, make it a switch file. And I'm going to call this location app intent. Make sure that you check this box here next to widget widget, widget widget extension, basically saying that this file belongs to the widget. And then here, I'm going to import widget kit, as well as I'm going to import that new framework we just talked about called app intents. And so next, I'm going to create a new structure called location app intent. And this is going to conform to a widget configuration intent. And so Xcode is going to yell at me here. Looks like I'm missing some sort of protocol method. It looks like I'm missing a title. So we need to give this intent some title. And so we'll just call it location. And then, as you saw, when I entered that widget, it gave me an option to input some sort of location into a location uh, parameter. And so we're going to create that location parameter right now. So I'll do at parameter. I'll give it a title of, let's do location. And then I'll give it some default value so that if the user doesn't type anything, it has some value to fall back on. So we'll just do Ithaca, New York. And then I will also, or I also just define as a variable called location here. So basically, whatever you, the value, whatever you, uh, the value the user puts in, will get stored inside of this location variable. Cool. And so next, let's go back to our weather widget entry. And so now, in addition to providing the entry with a date, the weather's content, we also have to provide it with a configuration. And so we'll let configuration, and this will be of type location app intent. Um, and so basically, this is going to contain the customized value that the user puts in for that entry um, for that widget. So we're not quite done yet, we're almost done, but first we also, or next we have to also make some changes to our timeline provider. And so instead of using just a generic timeline provider, um, we're gonna use what's called a app intent timeline provider. And so um, we have to do a little, a few changes to you know, this, this, this here. Um, starting with placeholder, we have to add that configuration uh, parameter to our weather entry. And then we can just do some, let's create a new object here, location app intent. Um, some more changes we have to make. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out these two functions here, get snapshot and get timeline. And the reason I'm doing that is because the function headers for the app intent timeline provider are just a little bit different than the function um, 
headers for the regular timeline provider. So I'll just let Xcode give me that. Um, and here I just pass in location app intent. Let's see what else here. Cool. So here the header is snapshot for configuration async, and here it's get snapshot. So I think it's just easier to just comment everything out and then paste in what we need. So for the snapshot, we'll just do the same thing. We'll copy this code here and paste it in. And then pass in the configuration that is passed in through this function header here. And then here we can just return, instead of doing completion, we're just gonna return the entry. I don't think you guys learned async await in this class, so don't worry so much about why we're doing return instead of completion. And then what we can do again for this function here, timeline, we can just copy our timeline code, paste it in. I'm gonna delete these old functions here. Looks like we're missing the configuration again. I'll add that. And we're going to pass in the configuration here. And then we're going to just return the timeline. Great. And then I believe the last one of the last things we have to do is inside of our weather widget file. Um, instead of using a static configuration, we're going to use that app intent configuration. Cool. And I believe that should be pretty much everything. And there's one more change. Um, over here in weather widget view, um, we want to actually show the location, um, which you previously weren't doing. So here we don't actually show the location, but we want to actually add that. So what I'll do is um, I'm just going to copy this code for now. Basically, this lets us, this defines a label. Again, you'll learn more about SwiftUI next lecture. Um, but then here, I'm going to reference instead of the weather conditions. I'm going to reference the entry and then the configuration and then the location. Let's see if that preview works. It might not, but okay. Um, and then for now, we can just actually comment out this preview code. So basically just to reveal what we did was we created a new location intent for getting the location from the user. We passed that into the entry because each entry has its own location to show the weather. And then we um, changed our timeline provider to use what's called an app intent timeline provider. And that basically gives us the configuration that the user passes in um, that we can reference. And then we take that and pass that configuration and its entry into the view. And then inside the view, we can then display that configuration's location. So if I go ahead and run this, and I go ahead and let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to weather. So now it shows my location here. The reason this one's not showing the location yet is because the system hasn't told us to refresh. Once that refreshes, that will show the default location, but that's why I added a new widget because I wanted to get one that was just cleanly refreshed. I can go ahead and hold this down. I can click edit widget. And then here I can change this to be any location I want. And the widget will update. So obviously we're using fake data here. We're just getting some random weathers, but if you were to have some sort of backend where you had the weather for a location, 
you could send this location to that back end and get that data to display in the widget. And that's pretty much it. So we've created a static widget and we've created a configurable widget. Um, that's all I have for you. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Can you uh, like push this code to like a repo? So yeah, for sure. Yeah, all the code I wrote today will be available as well as I'll also provide, I know here we changed, um, actually the easiest way probably is to, all this code is in the lecture notes as well as like little summaries. Um, but I can also push all this to the repo as well. Um, but you're going to miss out from the previous code that we removed here, like the get snapshot, get placeholder. Um, that you can all find in the lecture notes. Yeah. Also, is there like a minimum like high length that needs to be run? Because like I noticed some of the things that I have, or like some of like the methods that you use like aren't available in my export. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, some of these might be. So this is using the most cutting edge um, frameworks right now, uh, the most up to date. Um, this is Xcode 15. I know you can build widgets. Uh, as old as iOS 14, so you can probably use like you know Xcode 14 or 13 for that. But the syntax is going to look a little different. One of the challenges with building you know the most up to date thing, most up to date features on new platforms is that they're going to constantly change the syntax year after year, and so it can be a little hard to kind of keep up with that. Um, but I'm using right now Xcode uh, 15.0.1, and it's just running on iOS, an iOS 17 simulator. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Well, I'll be up here if you have anything you want to ask about. Um, thank you so much for listening and learn how to build widgets. Um, hopefully, you can go ahead and build these on your own, maybe integrate them into your Hack Challenge project. Um, but yeah, thank you. Uh, if y'all have any questions about a3 or A4, feel free to come up. All the teams are here. Um, attendance, I already looked around and then checked every single one of y'all, so y'all are good to go.